Hey, class of 2021. Welcome to the College Research 101 lesson for juniors. This is part of our high school and beyond planning for you guys. And typically in a normal school situation, we traditionally visit junior English classrooms and present a college lesson. We understand you guys have been bombarded with emails and information. So for the purposes of our current situation, this lesson will be short, concise, and will focus on what you need to know now. Our goal is to help you guys work toward graduation and to start thinking about life after high school. Graduation is a time of completion, a celebration of achievement, and a start of a new beginning. Your EDEB school counselors have a brief video for you to start thinking about your new beginning after high school. Let's get started. So what are we talking about today? We are gonna have a better understanding of your post-secondary options. You're gonna gain some advice about the college application process, and we want you to be aware of some of the COVID-19 implications. All right, so there are so many options for your life after high school. You could go straight into the workforce and explore your interests that way. The military is also a great option that can offer many life benefits and experiences. A vocational or technical college can teach you specific trades such as welding, electrical, or other skills. Apprenticeships can provide opportunities to work with skilled employers to learn a trade and earn a paycheck at the same time. Or you could take a gap year, which means you take a year off in between high school and college where you work, travel, or just gain some valuable life experiences. For the purposes of today's lesson, though, we will focus on what you need to know if your next journey will be college. Don't worry, though, we will focus on the other pathways that I just referenced in another lesson next fall. So again, why are we talking college today? This is why most of our seniors continue on to college right after high school. So we're here today just to help you start that process and feel empowered on how to actually start researching college. So personal investment, let's talk about this a little bit. So according to the US Census Bureau statistics, people with a bachelor's degree earn over 70% more on average than those with only a high school diploma and earn a million dollars more than high school graduates over their lifetime. The importance of a college level degree after high school will help you with the quality of life you'd like to live. So I, I challenge you, think about your future goals. What motivates you? Money. Do you want financial independence? Financial independence means that you're not gonna rely on anyone to help you with your finances because you got money of your own. It's, but it's not always about making a lot of money either. Do you want a fulfilling and satisfying job? Do you wanna feel pride about your job and what you're doing? Does helping out your family motivate you? Maybe you have a tradition of helping out your elders in your family and you wanna continue that tradition. So whatever your goals are, a college education can help you attain them. So, as I mentioned, we're trying to keep this concise and quick and get you some of the stuff you really need to know. So we're gonna start talking about college planning advice. So as you start your college search, we encourage you to think about the right fit. So when we say fit, think about this. Just as you try on a pair of jeans to make sure that they fit you, you also need to think about college in the same way. One size does not fit all when thinking about college. So when you look into college, consider and prioritize these characteristics. So first of all, location. Have you always dreamed about going to California or putting on your, your snow hat and your mittens and walking to campus in the snow on the East Coast? Um, do you just want to get out of the Seattle area? Or maybe you love the Pacific Northwest and it's really important to you to stay close to home. College size or campus size. That's a really important one to consider. Um, some colleges are absolutely enormous and uh, some students might thrive in that environment, but they also might feel like they're getting lost in a large crowd. Um, smaller colleges also give a student more access to their instructors or professors. So if that's important to you, really think about college size. Uh, majors and academic programs. So, you know, when you're thinking about college, if you already have a degree or a job in mind, 
you need to make sure that that college you're thinking about has those programs where you can earn your degree to, to pursue a career. Um, even if you don't know what you want to do when you grow up, that's okay. Just make sure that your college at least has some interests um, or some academic interests available for you so you can kind of pursue those interests and see if it's something that you do want to continue with. Um, social life. If, if going to college and having a thriving social life is important to you, you know, research clubs, sports, and activities. Um, a lot of colleges have those opportunities for students. And if it's important to you, um, you know, there are a lot of student life um, websites within the college uh, website. So that's something you could research online. Um, cost, that's a big one. Is it going to put you or your family into major debt for you to go to a certain school? Um, now is the time to start talking with your families um, or parents or guardians about cost and, you know, what is realistic for you and your family. And, you know, maybe you going to a college involves you taking out student loans or applying for financial aid. So that's something definitely that you need to start talking about now. The next one is admission requirements. You need to make sure that you have met a, camp, a college campus's admission requirements to apply there. That usually involves GPA. Um, possibly SAT, oops, SAT or ACT tests as well. Room and board options. Um, if you are interested in living on campus in a dorm, for instance, you, you, you might need to make sure that that college actually has dorms for students to stay in. Not every college does. Uh, so it's important to think about, are, am I going to live on campus? Am I going to need to get an apartment? Or do I just want to live at home and, and save a ton of money that way? There's also something um, called a two-year college, which could be considered a community college or a technical college. Uh, do you want to get your first two years out of the way in a smaller college? That's something important to think about. Um, a four-year college might be like University of Washington or a larger four-year four university. And then last, it's really important to talk to your family or your guardians about what are the new needs of your family after this COVID-19 impact or um, pandemic has, has impacted us all. Um, things have changed extremely fast and your personal or financial or family needs may have changed. So that's something really important to consider when you're thinking about leaving for college next year. So you'll see on the right side of the screen here, um, it says, relax, don't worry. There are nearly 4,000 colleges in the US that um, are available and that means that there is a school for you. So oops, what I want to show you though is just one kind of nice website that I like to use. Um, it's called uvisit.com um, backslash college search. And this is a nice visually kind of stunning um, website where you can take some vi uh, virtual tours within certain campuses. So I'm gonna give you an example. Let's take a look at, ooh, University of Pennsylvania. Oops, I double clicked. Okay, so this is University of Pennsylvania, and this is the virtual tour site for them. Um, you'll notice on the bottom right that a student named Kareem is giving us a tour, which is pretty cool. I've had to mute him because it doesn't completely work with my sound in this video, um, but you'll notice all this beautiful, um, all these beautiful shots of the different parts of campus. It's really bright and colorful. You kind of get a feel for what it looks like. Um, wow, this is the Fisher Fine Arts Library. It looks like there is a class in that library. Maybe this is just a little section of the library. But this looks like a pretty nice place to take a class. Okay, now I'm going to, oops, um, Key in Washington, 
just to see what's available near me. <coughs> um, you will notice that University of Washington is not featured on this website for some odd reason, but you could either use YouTube or some of those other um, college research virtual tour websites that I've listed in this presentation to check out UW. Um, or even, you know, take the bus down, hop in a car if you have a car, take a ride with your friend. Um, once things open back up, you could go maybe tour their campus as well. You'll notice we've got quite a few local colleges that are here as well. So that's a way to have a virtual college visit, which is pretty cool. Um, one other thing I do want to share with you is the Western undergraduate um, exchange, also known as WUI. So I'm gonna show you this website and explain what that's about. Um, so what I want you to do is think back to what I said about location and cost. If going out of state is a big deal for you, but you're worried about finances, consider researching a WUI school. So usually when you go out of state, you may have to pay 300% more than in-state residents. When you apply to, uh, to a WUI, tuition savings plan, you will pay no more than 150% of in-state tuition at participating schools. Some students who apply to WUI schools actually pay even less tuition than um, tuition in Washington State schools, which is pretty cool. So I've clicked on the WUI website. You see their homepage right here. Um, follow the mouse here, the cursor. Um, I'm clicking on the WUI Savings Finder. And excuse my internet, it's slow today. So um, right here, we're going to click on the WUI schools and eligible majors list. And what you'll see is a list of schools um, listed by, they're all alphabetical. So we've got Alaska uh, up at the top, followed by Arizona. So if you check out the left side, you can filter the states where you want to enroll. So let's say you have always dreamed about going to California. I just click California and there is a list of all the California schools that participate in this WUI program. Um, one thing to note is that um, some schools participate in WUI, but only for specific majors. So that's something really important to also research. So some or some colleges may offer WUI, but maybe only in engineering or only in computer science majors. So if you're a communication major, you may not um, apply or, or um, qualify for WUI. So that's something important to consider as well. Okay, so we're gonna move on. So continued. So the big question we get a lot as counselors and a lot of school staff get is how many colleges should I apply to? There's no perfect answer for that, but I would say identify six colleges that you're interested in and that you've done some research on. You can start there. Um, what we want you to do is pick a REACH school, a target school, and a safe school. REACH means that the school is pretty competitive or you might have, um, you may not have met all their academic requirements. Um, for instance, if they require a GPA of 3.8 um, for admission, and you have a 3.6. That school that you're applying to could be a REACH school. Um, so remember, though, it's not all about GPA. So there's other factors that could possibly get you into that REACH school. So um, that could be leadership, community involvement, anything like that. Um, the next thing to consider is a target school. So that means you meet the academic requirements that the college has. And then there's a safe school where you exceed the academic requirements and you're pretty sure that you're gonna get into that school. So something for you to research is college entrance requirements. When you're filling out your co college applications, you want to start thinking about um, what you're gonna need to do in the fall. Basically, when you start school, you kind of start that college applications process right when you start in your senior year. So in addition to your classes, you're gonna to need to make sure that you're doing your college research, you have time for your online college applications. There is a Naviance component and um, something called the Common App. We will teach you about this in fall, so don't worry. Um, there could also be personal essays and then just knowing the college deadlines. So that's just stuff you need to plan for and make time for in the fall. And then in addition to that, knowing college requirements, um, making sure that you're familiar with their GPA requirements, 
do you, do you need an essay or a letter of recommendation? Their deadline and is it affordable? So something to, something to know about COVID-19 implications. Know that everything is changing all the time. Um, school staff, we're trying to keep up on it as much as we can, but things change every day and things are gonna change in the fall. So we just all gotta work together and communicate and um, we'll get through it together. So, you know, some major helpful hints for you guys is just stay engaged in your coursework as much as possible. Colleges are in this too. They understand what you're going through because they're going through it too. So make sure you're just working to, you know, do the best you can, learn as much as you can, work with your teachers, email your teachers, respond to your teachers, and you will be fine. Um, as I mentioned, we can do some virtual college visits. Here's a couple more uh, resources to, to check out different college visit websites. Um, staying involved, do what makes you happy. Um, you know, I know that a lot of sports or, you know, other extracurriculars might not be available to you, but try to connect with people in, in clubs and, in, you know, just do what makes you happy as a person. Because, you know, the more involved you are, the, the more successful we are in school. We know that. So something to think about there. And then last, it's really important to think about is, um, do I need to take the ACT or the SAT? And the answer to that is most likely not. Um, a lot of colleges are not requiring the SAT or the ACT. Um, I highly encourage you to consistently check in with your colleges, go to their admission websites and see what their stance on an on a ACT and SAT testing is. Most are saying you don't need it for next year. Um, and most are saying that if you didn't take it, they, they will not hold that against you in your college application. So um, just a, a good place to double check if you need the ACT or SAT is this uh, website here called fairtest.org. And follow me, you can click college admissions here. Okay, it's not working. Oh, there we go. Um, here is the college admissions optional list. And you will see this list of universities that's alphabetized that um, these are all schools where testing is optional. I'm gonna click this state button right here and you can filter the colleges by the state. These are all online schools, so I'm gonna scroll down. So you'll, you'll notice Arizona, for instance. Arizona State, I'm gonna click on that. It says SAT and ACT may be required, but considered only when minimum GPA and or class rank is not met. So if you have a low GPA and really wanna to go to ASU, you might need the ACT or SAT. However, with COVID-19, you probably will have to go to their admissions website and see if they're even gonna look at it. So that's fair test. So again, communication, checking in with your college websites, that's super important right now. Here's a couple snapshots that I took from local colleges websites. And um, you'll see here this top one in purple, that's from UW. It says um, that nope, UW will not require SAT or ACT for any autumn 2021 freshman applicant. And it won't disadvantage you as an applicant if you don't take it. WSU is the same. It will not um, require test scores for ACT or SAT and Western will not either. So just an example there. So um, when I found these, I just went on to their admission websites and found these statements um, on their website. So some, some colleges haven't updated their sites yet, but every day we're hearing more and more from colleges that they're not requiring SAT and ACT. And then last, Hey guys, you've got about a year until you graduate from high school and fly away towards your new adventure. So you got this, we're here to help you. Email your school counselor, email Ms. Lipscomb um, if you need help. Again, we're here from you, for you and we're all in this crazy time together and um, things are changing every day. So again, reach out. If you can't find information, we'll help you find it. All right, we care about you and miss you and we will see you soon.